Radio Somerset. Uh, thanks for choosing to spend your Thursday morning with us. We are talking about awards and honours. If you are fortunate enough to have been given an MBE or an OBE or a CBE, then you were nominated by someone at some point. So we are going to be finding out uh, about that process, how you get nominated for an award. Uh, but also we are putting the focus on Vladimir Zelensky. You'll have seen him uh, in the news yesterday uh, speaking to the uh, American uh, parliamentary system. To, to this week, Last week, of course, he was talking to the House of Commons and MPs uh, then suggested that he should get a an honorary knighthood. So Mark Llewellyn Slade is our uh, leading honours expert. You, you're back, Mark. I'm like a bad penny, Simon. <laughs> Thank goodness. Well, as long as we've got you in the end, that's the important thing. So, look, so, an honorary knighthood um, given to people who, who aren't British is the, the upshot of it. Yeah, absolutely. Any worthy person based anywhere in the world who meets the criteria can be nominated for a UK honour, like an OBE or a knighthood. You don't have to be a British citizen or even live in the UK. So, it really is open to any outstanding person across the globe. However, strictly speaking, uh, the president can only be given an honorary knighthood as he isn't a British or Commonwealth citizen. That means he can use the letters KBE after his name, but he shouldn't be referred to as Sir Volodymyr. But given the magnitude of his achievements, are, I would urge Boris and the palace to consider amending the rules on this occasion. Um, you know, given what he's had to endure, he's clearly an inspirational leader and massively courageous. So there is no reason why he shouldn't be given the honour? No, no, absolutely. The, the only potential issue is that he can use the letters after his name, but unlike a, a British or Commonwealth citizen, he, he can't be referred to as Sir yeah. Vladimir. So when it comes to the actual giving of the award, we ordinarily, uh, it's the Queen's birthday honours list, the Queen's New Year honours list. The, I, I suspect the Queen doesn't sit with a very big pile going, yep, going to give one to him, going to give one to her, that kind of thing. No, <laughs> she doesn't. The honours and appointments secretariat at the Cabinet Office make the initial assessment of the nominations and carry out basic fact checks. Um, once that stage has been completed, the nominations are put forward to one of nine specialist subcommittees for consideration. So, for example, a candidate nominated for their services to medicine, say, would be passed to the health committee. A teacher would go to the education committee and so forth. And those recommendations are then sent to the office of the prime minister. Uh, and then they go on to Buckingham Palace to be rubber stamped. And then the Cabinet Office will write to those people, uh, usually about six weeks before the announcement, and it'll say that the Queen is minded to give them whatever it is, OBE, MBE, whatever, and if she were to do so, would they accept it? And the reason it's, it's put in that way is to avoid any embarrassment for the government and the palace whereby somebody was officially awarded it and turned it down on political grounds or because they didn't believe in the honour system or whatever. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that's how it works. And the, the, the twice a year, the birthday and the new year, can, can you do an award at any other time in, in these circumstances? Would it be possible that they could go, right, we're going to do it on Tuesday? Usually not. Um, the vast majority of honours are given out on those two dates. Um, but given the situation with the president, uh, I think rather than wait till the June round, they would look to, to push this through uh, sooner rather than later. And how many people do you need to, to back a campaign to, to get someone an honour? So as we said, you know, a lot of MPs uh, spoke about it, then it was in the news, so there would have been comments from readers of, of newspapers saying, yep, I think that he deserves an honorary knighthood. Is there some sort of official process where there's got to be this many names on a, on a form on, online somewhere? Yeah, generally speaking, you have to be in it to win it, and people can't nominate themselves. So if your listeners know of someone who they feel is worthy, then put them forward. You can nominate friends, family members, 
business and community contacts. And, and if your listeners are not sure if someone is eligible, then co- uh, contact us and we'll give them a free honest assessment of that person's chances. So, yeah, do make the effort. We always hear people saying things like, you know, often down the pub, oh, you know, Fred deserves a knighthood and all this kind of thing. But we all go home then and forget about it. But as I say, somebody has to put them forward. You need one nominator and a minimum of two letters of support. Although we'd recommend maybe five to 15 letters of support from a range of people who know the nominee in different ways. And when it comes to, to the awards, there is a sort of a pecking order. You've got sort of the the um, knighthood right at the very top, the damehood knighthood at the top, and then it comes down with your OBEs and your MBEs and your CBEs. If you get given one and then you get a couple of years later upgraded to another one, you do you lose the first one? No, no. You often see people who say have a knighthood, they will call themselves Sir John say, and they will have the letters KBE after their name, which is Knight of the British Empire, but they'll also keep the lower honour. So it may well say OBE, comma, KBE. So you can instantly see that that person um, was upgraded. And the Cabinet Office used the honour system as a carrot to motivate people to go on to greater things. So they quite often give a low to mid-level honour initially, and then they'd expect that person to be renominated maybe five, six, seven years later, and then get upgraded to a higher honour. Because, they, as I say, they want to motivate that person, and their concern is if they hand out high-end honours, like knighthoods and damehoods, to people straight away, that person might think, well, I've done the best I can in life, so I'm just going to go and lie on the beach in Barbados or whatever. Whereas what the government want is that person to be motivated to build on their achievements, do even more great stuff, and then get renominated for an upgrade. So if you're given an MBE, and then five years later you get upgraded to an OBE, you don't send your medal back? No, absolutely not. No, you keep the medal and you keep the letters as well. You just have MBE and OBE after your name. How amazing. Well, it's been a joy talking to you this morning. Thank you so much for your time. What an enlightening conversation. Uh, Mark, thank you for coming on. That's Mark Llewellyn Slade there, uh, the world's leading honours and awards expert, telling us uh, how we could get honours, uh, as well as looking into the, the big story that's been dominating the news, that uh, Vladimir Zelensky uh, deserves an honorary knighthood because of the way that he has dealt with uh, Putin's invasion. So... Your thoughts, if you've got any, you're more than welcome to let me know. Uh, 0800 678 1566 is our phone number. You can text us 81333. Start your message with the word Somerset. We're on the email. Somerset at bbc.co.uk. On the WhatsApp 08000.